You're listening to the Roofing Success Podcast, a show created to inspire roofing contractors to achieve optimal success in their roofing businesses. I'm the host, Jim Moline, the co-author of the book, Internet Marketing for Roofing Contractors, how to triple your sales and turn your roofing website into an online lead generation machine. I'm also the co-founder of Roofer Marketers, the digital marketing agency for the roofing industry. On each episode, I'll be sitting down with industry leaders to talk about their processes, the lessons they've learned, and how to find success in roofing. All right, thanks for joining us on another episode of the Roofing Success Podcast. Today, we're going to talk about how to systematize your roofing business to maximize your success. And and to, to join us on this topic, I found a company that has mastered the art of systemizing their roofing business, and uh, which was started about, about 10 years ago during the Great Recession. So you know it takes courage to start a, a roofing business, a little courage or a little craziness to start a roofing business in the middle of the, you know, middle of the, of the biggest recession in a, in a long time, but built a, just an amazing company with amazing branding and, and, and has ch- turned it into a franchise model, which you don't see in the roofing industry very often. But in doing that, these guys had to master their systems. And so that's why this is just going to be a great topic. Make sure that you're, you're, you're listening in to intently to what these guys are saying. And I'd like to introduce to you right now from Honest Abe Roofing in Terre Haute, Indiana, uh, the president of, uh, of, um, of Honest Abe, um, Kevin Newton, and the vice president, Jason Revere. Can you guys uh, tell us a little bit about your business, a little bit about Honest Day Roofing and how it got started? And Absolutely. Of course. Now, who wants to go first? You go first. You, you, start, you started the company. You can start the conversation. All right. So Kevin Newton, president and CEO of Honest Day Roofing Franchise and a franchise location here in Terre Haute, Indiana. So we started, as Jim said, back in 2007. And it was during the start, if you will, of the Great Recession. But here's one thing I'll tell all you roofers listening in right now. The roofs have no idea that the economy is in or could be in a recession. So roofs need fixed no matter what the economic environment is, and people still need services. So with that being said, money may be short and could have been t- and it was difficult to find. Financing had dried up, but still I was able to work with companies and find companies willing to work with us to do unsecured financing to get roofing services completed in that time period. And that's a big part of really any company's success is finding the money to help get services completed. So you just gotta keep that in mind. No matter the economic conditions, roofs don't know the weather, they don't know the economics, they just know they need repaired. Our job is to be there and get the attention of the consumer who needs our services. And that's really where it all starts. You've got to get attention. If no one knows you're in business, you don't have a business. So if they don't know you, they can't flow you. So you got to get in front of people. That's but for in, sure. Yeah, and, and roofing's easy. Yeah. I was talking to my, my, my friend Ben, the banker in the back room currently listening. And he said, man, ever since we've spoke, I'm driving around looking at roofs. I'm like, right. yeah, Ben, is that easy, baby? Who's got your money? Paul and Mary's got it. You just gotta stop and knock on the door and say, hey, your roof looks bad. Yep. Provide a service. Let me fix it for you. It's not quite that easy, but really the mechanics are that easy. Yeah. And we know yeah. multiple roofing companies, and Jim, I know you know them, you speak to them more than I do. They, they follow that model of just seek and destroy. They, they see a roof and they knock on the door. And that's a slow process, but it is part of the process. Everything has to work together to create a successful business. And you do still have to get out of the door of your car and go talk to somebody at their doorstep. And that's the first step. That's how I started, it was door to door. So I started that company in 2007 without any money. Actually, I was really in the hole and was able to get out of that hole. And I did that by funding my business through the consumer's money. So find the roof, recession or not, I can see a bad roof, I can knock on a door, and I can speak to somebody and provide them a service and I can change with them 
service for revenue. And they, the consumer funded my business and that's still how we operate today. Nice. Yeah. And, and so, so, uh, so when you, I, I, I mean, you guys are a six time Inc 5,000 uh, award winner now. Um, what are you, what are you guys doing? How many employees do you have? How many crews do you run? What kind of revenue kind of range are you guys in right now? Where, where, where did you start from and where, what, uh, where you are today? Well, of course you started from zero, but. Sure. Yeah. I'll, I'll touch on that real quick and I'll let Jason jump in on the, on the basics of a, a local roofing company, which is what we started as, and we still operate today. So we're in a small town of about a hundred thousand people. There's 25,700 owner occupied homes. Those are homes that I can serve. Our market's real narrow. So we, we focus on residential owner occupied dwellings, not apartment buildings. I'm not doing commercial work. I'm working on Paul and Mary lunchboxes house. Yep. They need services. They, won't they don't have time to do it themselves. We focus in on that specifically. So I make my market, I understand my market and I go after it with very intense fervor. So with that being said, the company itself still locally, we're at $10 million of revenue on our local level. And with that, we do that with a really, really a pretty small team. There's two, in, it was three inside team members. So I have two CCRs or customer care representatives. I have a production slash operations manager. I have three outside sales. We call them roofing advisors. And I have four field managers. So when you come down, when it comes down to it, you've got about 10, nine, 10 people there working up yep. daily and a 10 million yeah 10 million dollar so each company. person equals a million dollars of revenue for million us. dollars in revenue per employee that's awesome yeah, and the average you see in the industry is per team member is more, more, more like 175,000 but you have to take, keep in mind for those savvy roofers listening right mm -hmm. now they're saying well what about the guys who install the roofs so if you put them back into our mix you have to understand that even the our partner crews some people call them subcontractors. Mm -hmm. They're part of our team as well. And they do count as people on your payroll. You yeah. just pay them differently. Yeah. So our field managers can oversee two crews daily. And we install between five and six jobs are going every day. The completion rate there is about two and a half per day completed throughout a five day work week. We do that 50 weeks a year. So you can do the math on that and figure oh, yeah. out our tickets if you want. So with that being said, we're, we operate very, if you will, streamlined when it comes to the in-house team members. And we obviously leverage our ability to keep partner crews working year round, snow, ice, rain, doesn't matter. We work year round. Mm -hmm. And we, if you own a roofing company, you know how hard it is to work in the winter time and yeah. or get people to even want to put a roof on the winter time. Yeah. And I think that comes back to some of your questions you're going to have later is how do you can constantly get attention even yeah. when there's, perhaps a not an organic mindset to replace a roof. If you're in the Midwest or in the Northern regions of our country, I bet most people think, Hey, we have to wait till spring or summer to put a roof on. Well, mm -hmm. if you're a business owner, you can't wait till spring or summer. You have to create attention every day. I may have got off track a little bit, Jim. On That's all right. Question, Can, but Jim, you mind if I, you mind if I jump in? Uh, Go ahead, Jason. Yes. Yeah. We are, we are talking about two separate, uh, two separate companies here to a degree right. running the same kind of deal. So we've got, he starts his company in 2007 and begins going down the path to systematizing, as we mentioned in the intro. And I'll, yeah. I'll say one the thing, business. I'll, I'll stop Jason. One thing I started the company with that in mind. Yes. Was to create a franchise franchise system. So it wasn't you began with the end in mind. Yeah. yeah. We, didn't, we didn't start with, Hey, I, I've got bills to pay. I just need to own a job. Yeah, accidentally. Put a roof on. Now that happened. Like those things had to take place. That was the grind mm -hmm. you have to do every day. You'd have to be very strategic and systemized and tactical about what you're doing. Like you're, I have to put my pants on every day. I mean, I, I, I go through the same process every mm -hmm. day, but that process has to be scalable. Yeah. And you're, you're not going to be a $10 million revenue day one. It just doesn't happen. No, it doesn't. You I'm not gotta, saying it can happen. Yeah, no, you, I mean, you, you got to get there. You got to get there one, one roof at a time, but essentially. The, but the goal is like most millionaires in, in, the, in the world, they, they don't prepare to be a millionaire. So when the opportunity comes, they can't capitalize on it. So we're preparing, we prepared to be a multi-millionaire, million-dollar company. 
before it happens. So preparation is so important. We see it. I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, you're fine. In the lottery system, if you win a lottery, most most people blow the money yeah, in a few moments. That's right. Because the way. opportunity came, they weren't prepared for. It. They didn't have a million million dollar mindset. It's yeah. similar in the in the roofing industry. If a big storm comes in, yeah, and in sure. say say you get you get a you get a an influx of organic need for your product and service, so much so that it's bursting at the seams, and you go in and you capitalize on that, which is great. And I don't we're not not criticizing anybody for doing that, but it's when you see. There are there are companies that go uh, in you know so you see some of these magazines talking about you know top roofers in the country whatever you'll see them go from number three to number two hundred year over year and because they don't they didn't systematize their business they didn't think okay I've got to figure out how to make this replicatable I can't replicate weather it's not that's not what we're we can do we can't go out and and replicate a, a, a storm event right. And so and then they, if they don't, if they don't move locations, they can't grow their, their business. And so what, what we had to figure out and what, he, what Kevin had to figure out is starting this company was, all right, I've got, you know, it's, it's 2007. I'm, I'm going to start this thing because if I can learn how to do this, what I'm speaking for him, I can teach other people how Thanks. to do it too. It makes it easier when you talk. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and so if with that in mind going, okay, well, great, we're going to, we're going to systematize this business so that it take it takes some time to do that, right? I mean, you can't just, uh, I'm gonna day one have a franchise system because I've got a pretty good idea. Like, no, you gotta prove systems out. You gotta figure yeah. out what, uh, to avoid redundancies in team members even. I mean, we talked about that, nine team members running a $10 million company. You can't do that with redundancies in team members. No. You can't have a team member that's just kind of sitting around all day doing nothing, right? So you gotta, you gotta have really defined job descriptions. This is what you do. This is what you do in the morning. This is what you do at 9 a.m. This is what you do at 10 a.m. And here's how you do it all, all throughout the day. And then we bring on another guy. Hey, you, you're going to be a roofing advisor. Here are, here's your scope of work. And it doesn't step on the, on the toes of the other guy. You know, I've, I talked to a lot of uh, people, roofing companies that, that run, uh, they've got salespeople who are also running as field manager. Yeah, it's not a salesperson. That's not. It's that's not. Right. That's not how you. That's not. That's not how you do it. Per, yeah. Personally, at least to to scale at the rate that you need to scale and to have a replicatable business without weather uh, pattern being influencing what you're doing. You yeah. you can only knock on one door at a time. You've got to figure out how to get enough attention. To Kevin's point, to get the to get the inbound leads that are substantial enough to grow at a rate that can keep you, because if you're not growing, you're dying, the old, the old adage, right? Mm -hmm. That no matter what, you can be a $100 million company, there's still a wave coming for you. And if you're not growing, you will not, you're gonna get trampled by that wave. And so being right. able to continue to grow. I think it, that's a great transition there into, in, into starting to talk about these systems. And we're gonna try and go through uh, your marketing systems, some marketing systems, kind of breaking it down into what you need in, as far as systems in your business. Marketing systems, sales systems, construction management systems, hiring and recruiting systems, HR kind of systems there. And so that, what, what you were just talking about uh, and, and being, the, being there when there's no storm, right? And still having your business and still having a viable business during that time, it's, it's about your marketing systems, right? And I know that you guys have, you know, kind of call it uh, like top of mind mastered, right? I mean, everything from, you know, you know from, from, from the way that you branded with, with, the, with the Honest Abe character, all the way to, you know, having a NASCAR, uh, sponsoring a NASCAR car. So can you speak to maybe some of your marketing systems that you, that you feel are, 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 are keeping you top of mind in that, in that manner yes. and don't have to, you know, making you, putting you in a different position where you don't have to rely on those, uh, on those swings and weather to. Uh, yes, sir. To so uh, I'm going to wrap up what I was going oh, for the, uh, a for moment it. ago, and then we'll, then yeah. we'll, we'll answer that Definitely. question. I think it'll, it'll dovetail perfectly. So perfect. Uh, marketing is a huge part of any franchise system. You can't, you can't have a franchise. Uh, I see a ton of, I mean, there's 3,500 franchises out there, right? Uh, yep. Some are good. Some are less good. They're, they're, they're all different types of franchises. Uh, but the good ones all have a recognizable brand. And so we, we thankfully, to, to Kevin's credit, had a recognizable brand from day one. Uh, yeah. you, you, 
you can't get better mind share than uh, having a logo and a mascot that is is basically legally mandated to teach third graders. Yeah. You don't you don't see that very often. You know, we can't have Joe's roofing company or, or even hell, Kevin's roofing company. Kevin right. is not legally mandated to learn about in third grade. Yep. And so with that uh, with that as our as our, you know, figurehead, it may it makes that top of mind awareness as you mentioned before so much uh, more attainable. And so in 2017, we felt like we had finally reached that point where we could uh, franchise this thing. And so that's, I'm just kind of giving you some, some uh, yeah, date exactly. background on the franchising yeah. deal. So in 2017, we filed our paperwork with the uh, FTC, became a, a, uh, a franchise able to, uh, to franchise nationwide. Uh, and we've been growing ever since. So $10 million is the local uh, company here. We are projecting by the end of next year to be about a $40 million company overall. Uh, maybe maybe a hair more if some of them, uh, some of the locations can get open uh, and, and quickly generating revenue. And uh, we're up to 15-ish locations now, four, 14 locations, and uh, growing all, all the time that way. Back to marketing systems. Yes, you were. It's so important to have a to have a brand. Uh, the, there's all the all the rage now is is the digital advertising. You know. Uh, having landing pages and collecting lead data and doing all that stuff, right? I mean, you, you handle a lot of that stuff. You do that, yeah. but that's not a replicatable process. Okay. So the minute you turn off, let's say your credit card right. uh, expired yesterday. If you didn't renew it today, you get no, you have no leads. That's it. You have no leads until somebody gets in there and clicks another button and keeps it, keeps it going. Having a brand yeah. and being recognizable and owning Mindshare, what's the most expensive real estate in the country? Mental real estate. Mental real estate. It's the most expensive real estate in the country. If you can own mental real estate, we already own half of it. Okay? Honest Abe, Abraham Lincoln. That's right. It's there. We're halfway there. All we have to do is now associate people's minds with Abraham Lincoln means roofing now. So the, the battle for the Mindshare is half won. And so by doing that, we can have that where people, they, they just, they're like, people, people like to be led and like to be told what's good and what, what to do, right? That's why we go to McDonald's. McDonald's right. isn't the best. We just know about it, right? They're best known. Yeah, they're best known. I'd rather be best known than best. Oh, yeah. always, always, <laughs> always. <laughs> Give me best known over the best. Like you guys, I bet you got some best roofers in the world. You can keep the best roofer deal. That's I want right. to be the best known. Yeah, best and you, known. Yeah, you do, because that's what's, that's what's going to win that's what's going to win the day. We can all make a better cheeseburger at McDonald's. Can I get a witness? Come yeah, on. Yeah, man. absolutely. Right. But you're still going to go there. And, you know, there's, it's, very, it's, very, it's, it's, it's rare that best and best known uh, yeah, intersect. Know. Apple is maybe G, GE and Apple, maybe yep. the only two that, that at one point in history were best and best known at one time. Yep. And when that happens, and mm -hmm. that's when you get a mega company. And that's, why, that's what we are, I, I believe. We're, we're best. We're Apple. And best known. That's and so Apple, or Apple of roofing, the Apple of roofing Macintosh. That's huge. Yeah, we should, but unfortunately we have a Dell computer. That's why we keep having problems over here. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> the, uh, we should, we should have invested in, in, in the honest Abe of computers, Apple, right? Yeah. Uh, so anyway, with, with the marketing systems in place and now I'm not, I'm not discounting, I'm not poo pooing the idea of digital marketing and we all understand it's, it's all, important. It's all important. But it all has to work in concert with one another. It's like, you know, your underlayments have to work well with your, the products over top. I think that's, that's right. important. Right? You can't go you, without the ice and water shield. That's right. You, you, can't have, you can't have a waterproof system without having all of the things working together in the roofing world. That's right. You can't have a substantial business without having all of the pieces working. And that, goes with, that starts yeah. with marketing. And, you know, and even in, marketing's in marketing, the genesis of the sale. They're, they're just tools, right? The digital marketing the offline marketing, your, your canvassing, door knocking, all of these are just tools in getting to that brand recognition, right? So you can utilize yes. these to get to that brand recognition, but they are not the, 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 the be all of everything, right? Yes, no exactly. one can, you, you don't have a business if you're just buying leads off of HomeAdvisor. That's no, not a no. business, right? That's not a business. That is a, so. that's a service. That's right. It's not a business, and so yeah. to have a to have a business, you you have to be known. People have to want to purchase That's right. from you, not just purchase a roof. They want to be. Able, you want your consumers to want to purchase from 
you. And the only way to, the only way to do that is to create a brand at a, at a, on a large scale. Sure. Yep. You can have word of mouth and that's people wanting to buy from you. You can't do that on a large scale. I mean, we're going to install 900 roofs in Terre Haute, another 400 in, in Evansville, another, you know, it, it all, all over the place. We're going to do about 2000, 2,500 roofs this year. And how many people do you know that's that wander around talking about the experience they had with a roofing company? It's very seldom. Very. I own a roofing company. I don't know anybody. You, you don't even know right. anybody that needs a roof. So you know, I don't actually. The idea of Man, you need a roof? the idea of, of abdicating the responsibility of you growing your business to your customers mm -hmm. is foolish, and it's not going to happen. And then uh, oh, I love that relying on home advisor to send you leads yeah, again is not that's not that's not a business that is a nope. that's a service and it's fine again everything all i'm not i'm not hating on a home advisor i'm Sounds just saying like you might be hating it's all advisor. it's all it's all part of it sure but you, you to be the master of your own domain to quote seinfeld uh you, you have to if you're going to be the king of the castle you've got to control the mind share of the company. You got to get mental real estate. And that's what, that's what we focus on. That's why we, that's why we do things like sponsoring an NASCAR. That's right. It's not, it's not to get the, the influx of the of leads to get these crazy amount of leads because we've got, we're on a NASCAR. Like nobody's watching NASCAR going like, you know, I'm going to submit a lead form now because I saw them <laughs> on NASCAR. No, but when they need that roof, who that's do you right. think they're going to, who, who are you going to call Ghostbusters, right? I would. It, the reason, the reason that song is so powerful is because it's so relatable. Who are you going to yeah. call? You want them to want to want to call you. And that's what, that's what we, that's what we do. And that's what we focus on. Anyway, so I feel like I've hogged a lot of time there. So that's all right. In, in that talk. presence, in that presence of having, you know, the, the, like the NASCAR marketing and that awareness branding going on at all times, when they do Google a company in Terre Haute, and they see you guys there, they go, oh, I know that company. Mm -hmm. it, they, they, it's, it's relatable. So all of the other marketing that you're doing is more effective in that manner. Your salespeople probably have a better close rate because they, they, there's some level of trust to your company already. There's a lot that goes into that. So in your marketing system, what, you know, maybe break down what you're doing uh, offline, online, give us a little insight into that maybe and, uh, and what, what what you guys are are finding is most effective in those regards? Wait, wait, what you want to you want? Can, no. can I say one thing? Yeah, of course, of course. I know you want to talk like for an hour. No, you're good. <laughs> Let me say one so. thing. <laughs> it's it's not it's not hard. The one thing is omnipresence. Omnipresence. You know, that's the that's. See, most, most owners of businesses, that's who, Jim, I believe that's who you're speaking to on your podcast. Yeah. yeah. Most, most of them are trying not to lose. You know, they're trying not, their game plan is, I don't want to lose. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, working out, they're working off a budget. Like, I got, I got a $1,200 budget. Dude, I'm trying to spend $12 million today. Yes. Like, how much money can I spend? I got a banker sitting in the room. I'm going to take all his money. If he, gave, if he gives me yeah. a million bucks, I'm going to spend it all getting attention. So I've proved if I spend a million, it produces 10 million in revenue at an 18 multiple on, on net money. And I didn't pay for any of it. Yeah. That million dollars I spent in getting attention, I didn't pay for it. It wasn't my money. I used the homeowners who were giving me money for their roofing systems. I just reinvested it back in the, into the marketplace, got more attention, omnipresence. I'm up in your business everywhere you go. You can't get rid of me. I'm me, your flipping skull, bouncing off your inner psyche, thinking, who, I, I help, I go to schools and do things for kids, and they think Abraham Lincoln is a flipping, flipping roofer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, he's a president. It's, it's no joke. He's a president. Yeah, he's a roofer. Awesome. I don't know. It's like, that's local. That's local. But yeah, yeah, that's where I'm at. I'm working here locally. Yeah. We're, 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 we're trying to get there nationally. That's so, the thing. yeah. So the thing is, if you, if you put, everybody thinks they're, oh, I can't afford to invest. Dude, you're not, it's not even your money. It's all fake anyway. Why would you even care? Yeah. Take 10,000 bucks. I can turn it to 100,000 in 30 days. I, I can't tell you how to do that because you got to buy a franchise. Yeah. But I can, give, I can give Oh, you, I, could, I could do better. Well, I could take you. Well, we'll go ahead then. You one up me, one upper. $35,000 and we'll turn it into millions. Oh, that's, that's, that's not. That's, that's coming later. That's repeatable. That's coming later. That's, yeah. <laughs> we'll yeah, save but, that for the end. <laughs> that's, that's the reality though. So for, for, for your clients, you're, you're speaking to Jim and, oh. and any, any roofers who are just out there. I understand the biggest problem is they're, they're still thinking like a roofer or a business owner and they yeah. own jobs. 
but and they're I, trying not to lose. So I see it in everybody's walk of life. I speak to hundreds of people a week across the country, and they're all trying not to lose their house or trying yeah. to make the car payment. If I could just make yeah. ends meet, mm -hmm. quit trying to, because what they get end up getting is exactly what they were trying to do. Yeah. Hey, you, you made it. it. You didn't right. die. You didn't I, die. You got the yeah. payment made. Congratulations. You know, whatever. You're 10 days yeah. behind, but they're not trying to win. I get Take so many this. people that I talk to asking, what is the least, essentially they're, the conversation is, what is the least amount of money that I can spend to have a multi-million dollar roofing company? Uh, all of it. <laughs> it's the, you know, it doesn't make sense. Can, can you? Trick question. That's impossible. It's <laughs> impossible. Run a multi-million dollar company, man. That's the problem. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that should be that. That should be your answer. That's your answer. And, yeah, and it's so impossible, it, man. You, you can spend $10 million and you're actually, you're not, you're not going to have a multi-million dollar company because you're inept. Yes. It, it's a, it's a, it, it's a, it's a crazy thing. The way that people think about all of these, about the way that they want to run a business. And, uh, and I guess that's the other part of it is some people aren't running a business. They're self-employed. Yeah. Yeah. They own, Ben and I were just talking about that. They, they own a job. That's yeah. right. Like in the franchise, we, we operate in the multiple businesses. And one of them, obviously, as we, as we spoke about and Jason's in charge of, is a, is a franchise entity. And in that industry, the franchise is a lot of franchise models that are what I would call maybe wrong, but self-serving. They, where you end up buying a business in a box. Yes. You own, own, and you said, you said it right, Jim, mm -hmm. they, you own a job. And who's, who's winning in that scenario? The franchise yep. or the, the franchise or is winning in that. Cause they, they, hired, they, they just hired a, they hired an employee through you. Yeah. They yeah. hired an employee yeah. who's going to pay them to work for them. That's right. That is. is are you talking about Subway and Quiznos and those guys? Uh, are you I'm, talking about over there? You, you could, <laughs> out, out of the third, out of, out of the 3,500, you could look at about 3,300 of them. That's right. I've, I've seen that. I've looked at, in a, in a franchise model, I've looked at those a lot of times and it, it's like, oh, I could buy a job. I could buy a $60,000. Yeah, I don't want to call anybody out. No, not, a, but, a, but now you're, you're talking about, so you, you want an opportunity, right? And in oppor in, the opportunity is created by, by building a business. Well, that's, right? that's what it comes back to you. That's why you're doing what you're doing, Jim. And kudos to you for trying to help this, this industry. Yeah. Yep. Is because the biggest, the biggest challenge is you, you know, the potential to, to help people and you've got a core competency and you have a, a reason to serve people and you're trying right. to help people with your, 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 your gift that you've been given and you may not be a, a roofer, but you understand the, the need to get attention in the industry and how exactly. underserved it is. Yep. It's very fractured as a, as a group because most of us are ut ut utilitarians, if you will, and we are good roofers, mm -hmm. yeah. but we're not going to be good marketers. We're not going to be good business leaders. We don't know how to scale like a subway. That model fits very well for a guy who just wants to earn a hundred thousand dollars a year. Yep. He buys a subway, but a roofing company, as you know, and you, I believe your listeners believe they want to know more and they believe that it's possible is they could have, I, I, I'll, I'll say with this real quick before I keep moving forward and I'll be done. The average roofing company in America is doing $525,000 in revenue across our, our country. Mm -hmm. You're talking, the, and I know you've talked to some big, big, big hitters. This guy, you, you know, you can, I know a group that does 798 million. Yes. Yeah. See, that's, that's a, I don't care. I'm going to round it up. That's a billy. That's a that's billion big, dollar group. That's right. Going, going door to door, knocking. No marketing. Yeah. No, no advertising. None. Door to door, dude. That's hard. Hard you work. Got little, you got little babies crying around, but it's so hard to go cold call. They got. They're doing a billion dollars worth of it. A billion. A billion. Damn. Yeah. Damn. That's impressive. That's big. Yeah. That's that, big yeah. stepping dog. That's systematization. That's to the nth degree. Is what that that's is. right. You want to get a lesson, you got to learn how to wake up in the morning and do the same thing consistently that works. Rinse and repeat. That's why a franchise system is so important. But with that yep. being said, the whole point of my rant is this. You can scale a roofing company anywhere you want to go. Why do you want to do what you want to do daily? So if you want to own a job, own a roofing company, great. You can do that. You if can. you want to own a business that is 
passive income, and everybody, this the buzzword, Jim, you know this. This is pa- oh, yeah. oh, what passive income? Passive. There's no such thing as passive no. income. You have to do something to get income. It doesn't That's exist. Right. Like I own commercial real estate, dude. It's still not passive. Yeah, you're still doing stuff. My fire alarm doesn't work, dude. It's not passive. Someone's got to fix okay. it. You know, it's just the way it goes. I have you. Oh, you got property managers. Whatever. It, it's still you're, it's. It's still, you got to do something. That, mm-hmm. that my Bible you hires me to hire the property manager. Yeah, sweat, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to work. You're, sweat of your brows are punishment. Anyway. The, so it, it could become management. Yeah. As a, a, as a task, right? Well, you, right. That's, and that's where task, right? any good company, look at GE, man. GE's a model for everybody. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you really want to de-layer things, GE's an HR company. Yeah. How many different industries do they work in? They realize they got out of some because like, you know, Building toasters is pretty well done. Mm-hmm. So let's, let's build x-ray machines and cascaders and jet engines, stuff yeah. that, you know, nowhere else. We can. If I can't be number one or number two in the market, and I can't figure out a path to get there, mm-hmm. I'm out. So that's the thing. So if I go into a new town, if I, we're going into all of Alabama this coming year. Okay. If, when I get in there, dude, let's, we're, if I can't help those people be one or two, we're done. We're going to fold up shop. And we're going to go to a town where we can maximize and scale up that place. Because if you can't be one or two, you might you shouldn't even be doing it. In other words, it, you you won't be one or two today. If no. you're starting, you guys you got, you got some uh, clients, I'm sure, Jim, that aren't n- number one or two right. in their respective respective markets. But you are trying to systemize a way for them to get there. But they have to want to get there. And they by the have way, to want to get there and be willing to take the time and effort that it takes to get there because there's there's a, there is a path that, that you have to go down. There are no diet pills. Yeah, I got one in my pocket. <laughs> you got one? You got yeah. one? Yeah, that's why he's so skinny, man. Right here, man. Yeah. Diet pill. yeah. There you go. I won't eat lunch at all today. I'll just take a pill. There you go. And, practice, and, and, and work all night long on your yeah, business. Right? It's because it's, it's full of caffeine, man. It suppresses your hunger and just keeps you, I mean, 14 hours a day, I'll be working. I'm not going home. I'll go, I won't go home until I get my stuff done. That's that's a different that's that goes back to discipline. Well, that mm. see, I, we're getting off track. Though. But but I honestly, I, I'll I'll tie it up with this. Go ahead, tie that thing up, man. Most of I imagine most of your customers are hard workers. Yes, I would I would I would wager that to be true. That they, I bet you they're hard workers. I bet you they're working there fourteen hours a day. I bet it's, they're working on the wrong things. It's the it's the not not working on the proper on the right things, and it's also well, they're working on the things. Yeah, or it's on the business, or business. it's giving up right before the you know the the, the story three feet from gold. Yeah, it's, it's not seeing what it's like. I mean, we, when we started the franchise system, uh, what eighteen months ago, uh, 19, 20 months ago, give or take, we we couldn't see what tomorrow was going to look like you know you you can't you can't you can't actually physically grab what you're what you're looking for but you you have to to know that it's out there well it's like it's like in the if you're 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 going in the darkness right you're going in the darkness i was i was there on i was there sunday night yeah and you but you know your destination is out there like we know our destination is out there we just can't we can't see it we just know that it's there. Just a segue. Can I segue for a quick? Yeah, segue. For opportunity to talk about airplanes. That was so cool. There you go. Perfect. All right. So, all right. All right. I'm sure you got some guys on the podcast who are pilots. And so, we're, my family and I, we went down for the weekend to Naples. And I was coming home. It was crap here in Indiana, man. It was snow and ice. It was garbage. Mm-hmm. So, we're flying back. You, you saw, it's nighttime. It's dark. I'm coming down from uh, out of 27,000 feet. At 14,000, I enter the, the, the clouds. You don't know because it's nighttime. The lights are on. I got the, I got the taxi lights or the run, the, uh, landing lights on so I can see the snow and the ice flying, hitting the wings. Now, I'm watching the wings just take on ice, man. I mean, this is just growing. The windshield's covered in ice. You can't see anything. It's IMC, which means you're in the clouds. And it, you're just – the plane's doing its job to, to, to shed the ice off the wings. The ice is flying. The prop – it's a turbo prop, so it's a jet prop. And it's the thing's shaking because it's fighting through the ice, and it's 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 hair, it's it's scary. If you weren't prepared for that, most people would panic and they would quit. But that I'm me, I was prepared for. I knew what I was getting into. He said, not seeing where you're going because they don't understand the why, the the reason, the purpose, the goal, why procedure systems, the marketing is so important. All the things we're talking about today, which we're kind of getting off, off basis here, but. A pilot, 
had to checklist. I'm doing this every time I get in the plane. I get into an instrument condition, which I was. I was coming down, very dangerous situation, taking on ice, snow, rhyme. It, you got it, a lot of things you got to be concerned with. And I'm shooting an instrument approach into an airport at night where I can't see the ground or anything. I don't know which way is up or left or up or down. I'm just, I'm flying a procedure. It's called a procedure approach. It's an RNAV 3 true approach into Holman Field here locally in Terre Haute. And I can't see anything. And meanwhile, meanwhile, I'm managing a company, which is the airplane. And the company is taking on problems, which is ICE. But I'm following the procedures. I'm working on my training. And I'm doing the things, my checklist I know I need to do in order to do the, manage the situation correctly and professionally and land safely. I got four kids on board and my wife, who I all love and cherish, and I'm not going to fail them. The problem is most of your clients aren't thinking this way. Mm -hmm. they're, they're working without a plan. They have no idea what they're going into. They're walking into a house. They're doing roofs. They know, they know about how the roof, like I know how to fly a plane, but dude, listen, flying planes is not as easy. I can put a roof on blindfolded. I can fly a plane blindfolded. I did it in the dark Sunday night. I know. But can you manage those problems? Can you take on the ice? Can you still shoot the procedure and follow through and execute without the proper preparation, the plans, the system, procedures, the tactics in place, and being prepared for that opportunity? You're going to fail. Yeah. And that's where most companies fail. They get a little bit of resistance. They get pushed back. The market, they, Jim, you know this. They do marketing what, for a month or two. Mm -hmm. Hey, man, yeah. I'm going to give you leads. You suck, Jim. And yeah. they fire you. Like, dude, it's not, that's just, this isn't a six, this isn't a two week deal. Yeah. Right. They had a backup, but this, the, the deal is they had a backup plan. Yeah, in your, in your analogy? Yeah, I'm not, I can't, there's no backup there's plan. No backup plan. <laughs> no backup you just, plan. And, and that's going the, in. That's and, the, that's the same, uh, that's the same ethos that, that he's approached this business with and that, you know, our franchisees have to approach their business with because they could give up. You could just, you could just give up, fold up shop, you, you know, and, and quit. At any moment, in, in anything you do. And it's the ones that, that keep going that are the ones that succeed. It's not, it's the ones that give up are the ones that fail. Yeah, I'm getting to the airport, man. Yeah, if, you have, I'm getting if you have faith in the outcome, you will execute, right? So you have your, your faith in landing that plane, you just had to execute the steps necessary to land that plane safely. Yeah, I mean, there's multiple chances there to panic. Multiple. Like, I don't know how much ice I can take on and shed. I was taking on more weight than the plane could probably hold, but I was, I had 50 gallons of jet fuel left. Yeah. Knew, I knew what the weight of the ice roughly when I uh, was guessing basically yeah. at what the plane was taking on. So it was useful. So uh, you're changing the laminar flow of the wing, you're changing lift capabilities, you're adding weight to the aircraft. All these things are changing the behaviors of the airplane, but you got to know these things and, you only know these things through practice. I mean, this morning, our sales meeting, practice, rehearse, re uh, and educate yourself. I mean, pr practice, drill, rehearse. Practice, drill, rehearse, and educate. Practice, drill, yep. rehearse, and educate. Practice and every day. No matter what part of your business it is, you got to do it. That's do it. the system to that, right? There's a system yeah. for everything, right? Everything, there, yeah. everything is a system in, in your business, and you'll never be able to – I mean, you can fully master them, but, but, but you have to put in the hours to master these systems. First, yes. you need a system to, to, first you need a system, and then you need to execute on those systems. So. Yeah, and you need, to, you need to practice constantly. And that's what we, we developed, we developed that, and that's another little segue there. So we, we, know, we know that the, the hardest part of, of running a business is to get your system, which is great. You can have the greatest system in the world, but if you don't have the people to run it, it's going to be you running it, which is that's yeah. who wants, who wants to do that all day long. Not me. That's yeah. not a system. It's not a system. Yeah. And so, uh, we had, we knew we had to create something. What better way to learn than with video using video to educate people uh, is proven to be 80% more retention rate than yep. using uh, training manuals alone. And so why the heck, why not use it? That's the best thing we got now. So yep. let's do it until we can figure out how to synthesize it into scent or something that's going to be more powerful. Oh, that's coming 5G, that's coming. baby. Yeah. Just watch out for 5G. That's uh, a killer. So we created Honest Dave University to do that. You know, hundreds of hours of videos, uh, teaching people how to do every aspect of the jobs necessary to do this. So that way, you, instead of you learning how to do it, this is what most franchise systems do. You, hey, you come out here, we'll do two weeks of training, one week of training, whatever. We'll teach you how to do this. We'll flood a, we'll flood a building. We teach you how to turn fans on. <laughs> <laughs> Restoration 101. Yeah, then we, then we 
then you, then you go back home and then you can teach other people how to turn fans, turn fans on. on. You plug That's them right. in. Yeah, you plug them in, you turn them on. But if, if we, we didn't feel like that was living up to our end of the bargain as a franchisor, so we knew, hey, and, and we also know when you, let's say when you graduate high school, you're not prepared to teach high school, right? No. You no. just graduated. And so why, why would we expect you to graduate here and then go back and teach other people how to do it? So we created Honest Abe University for that. I'm reason a, i'm a graduate by the way i yeah, graduated graduated honest Abe university magnum cum laude you got the diploma and uh yeah, that's right so the it's hundreds of hours of videos you you can you get in there whatever you whatever your your job is your roofing advisor your field manager your inside sales your uh customer care representative your franchisee there's franchisee specific things uh, uh if you're an accountant in within your company you know how do you how do you best shield yourself from tax liabilities things like that uh, and we created it in order to have a systemizable business, uh, yeah. more so because that, that's why roofing companies aren't, uh, prevalent in the franchise world. It's cause it's, there's a lot of moving parts. Yeah. It's a difficult business to run. This is not a Jamba juice. Like you that's don't, right. it's not, your, your training manual isn't open, put open on the sign, put up your sign on the front okay. and get a blender. Uh -huh put ice okay. and fruit in the blender uh -huh. and hit on, on, dump out, charge $8 and repeat. I like this model. <laughs> it's a good model. It sounds Don't easy. forget your hairnet. Yeah. Oh, uh, I like it. <laughs> so, but that's, and again, I'm not, I'm not discounting their, their business. It's just a different business. Their, their hard stuff is in creating the recipes, is in yeah. creating all the stuff that, that goes into uh, why people would want to purchase from them. Our hard stuff is getting the human beings necessary to run the business. Yeah. And so that's what, that's what Honest Abe University is all about. And that's and what- Jim, you know, you know this and the guys listening, whoever listens, they understand they're, that what they complain about, I guarantee you, what they complain about the most isn't marketing. Hmm. They can't find good people. Can't find good people. Can't find good people. Number it's one thing, by the way, that's marketing too. They're not looking. Mm -hmm. it, you're bitching about it. But are you looking for them? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I got an ad. New, dude, ad in, that's not a ad on Indeed isn't looking. Hmm. There's so many opportunities to find people. Like you're, a third of your day has to be dedicated to recruiting. A third of your time. So if you're working 10 hours, 3.33 3 hours, 3 .3 hours of your day should be focused on recruiting. Mm -hmm. Whether that be at lunch or I'm recruiting. I'm at the car lot. I'm recruiting. Yep. I'm, I'm getting my shoes shined. I'm recruiting. I'm looking for, I'm, I'm, I'm actively receiving good vibes from people. So you're, you're hiring on character first and attitude second and get quit. Try, we're all trying to find, Oh, a good roofer. Quit looking for roofers. They don't exist. They come across the border. You can find those guys, but they don't speak English. And they got to teach them how to speak English. But if you're trying to find good people, obviously hunt where they hang out. Number one, that's common yeah. sense. Yep. But, once you find someone's got character and good, good, good attitude, that's a, well, we hire like character, give me character attitude. attitude. That's all I need. I'll train the rest. I have to, you, your groups you're talking with to, uh, in the future and, or who are listening, they've got to become training companies. You're not okay. going to find top producers and or magical roofing repair people with magic wands. Ooh, they're, they're, you're, that's, that's not, first of all, sustainable or repeatable. So yeah. you got to create a system that yeah, does can, that internally. You can, you can, you can repeat. Which is part of your marketing, by the way. You got to find those yeah. people. You can repeat training. You can't repeat finding people who are already trained. Like you're not going to, I mean, you're not going to hire, you, you can't hire me at 35,000 bucks, but the, you're not going to get 80 of me. You get 80 of me through my university yeah. and him and so on and so forth. But so, so putting this, the right systems in your business and then training the people in your business on those systems. But it's also about hiring the right people too, which you had spoken to a little bit about the yeah. character. Do you guys use any, any uh, personality testing, things like that? I know, you know some people use DISC. Some people are using, um, what's it, Colby, things like that when you, uh, in, your, in your recruiting process and hiring process? Yes. Uh, yes to all of those uh, and it all depends on what what the position you're hiring for too it, some some things don't make a lot of sense to to go through if you're you know, yeah. hiring whatever but yes yeah. yeah, so the identifying them and there's no magic bullet to identifying people either that's no. why we our motto is uh, uh, hire slow fire fast yep 
Uh, so you got you got to be you got to be discerning with your ability to understand who people are and be able to read people well, uh, which is I, I could probably get too much in in uh, behind the curtain with it on our on our interviewing style and techniques, but. Uh, there's there's ways you can you can get information from people and be able to uh, tell kind of what what a person's character is without them actually saying it. Yeah. Uh, and you can you can implement those things. Well, that's all part of the training that we do here. Uh, when they you know, the inauguration period when they a new franchisee comes here and and trains, we actually will spend an entire day on basically just how to interview people. Here's 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 how you do this. Here's how you figure out who to hire. Uh, and you're, you're not going to always find, you know, everybody's looking for diamonds, you know, the, the, yeah. you know, Aladdin was a diamond in the rough, right? So you try to find more Aladdins than you do for, for fully formed diamonds. Uh, Cause there's just more of them out there. Yeah. You know, unless you need one guy to work with you, that's going to make your business amazing. And just, just you and him or you and her or whatever. Sure. You can find, you can find an a plus, uh, if you have a small, if small need, hiring need, finding, a hundred A pluses or 10 A pluses uh, right out of the gate. It might be a little harder. So what if you could take a B and turn them into an A plus? I don't know, dude. I'd argue that a little bit. Go ahead and argue it. I'd argue that. Argue it. I, argue. I, you should be looking for the A pluses, uh, but you have to have a system that can take a B to an A plus. Well, I would say if you're, if you're going, to, well, you might, yeah, I okay. I'm not arguing it's the B to an A. You can, the system, our system can do that. And it that does. That works too. It, it does work. Always look for the A's if mm -hmm. you can. I, I know I'm, I'm kind of speaking out both sides of the mouth. I, didn't, well, I said of earlier, course, it's not possible. Always look for them. But what I guess what I'm trying to say is when you find a C, don't think you can hire a C and turn it to an A. No. Like you can't, you're wasting your time. No, you can turn a C into a C plus, maybe. Let, let a C go back to the C business and let that business fail. Yeah. Don't bring those people on. No, yeah, yeah. yeah. That goes B, back to you hiring slow. B, hiring B, B plus is your cutoff. I mean, you're not, we're, yeah. Yeah, you can't take, you're not taking, uh, uh, an F. We got we got a banker in the room. I, he, 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 he probably don't want to come up here and talk, but he, yeah. I guarantee you, he's not he's not gonna write. He's looking at me thinking, Dude, I'm not gonna write this guy. I'm trying to get a loan, right? He's not gonna write me. He's like, no, this guy's not a. He's not an a character. I looked at his stuff. He's kind of sketchy. He's on a weird podcast. Some guy is somewhere in nowhere land. He's flying <laughs> ice planes. He's got ice planes. It's all it's all weird. Man. Yeah. Like this is not a normal deal. Of course not. Nothing's normal anymore. So, but they're looking at, they have a certain parameter. They've got to fit their, they fit people into a box. Like the, our people got to look like this or else we won't do business with them. Ugh, yeah. That's the way we work. Oh, whatever. Meanwhile, they're getting, they're getting money. If you have a hundred thousand dollars in, in, in your, in your account, they'll give you a million because they've taken nine times from the government, but they no interest. It's, it's all fake. They're borrowing on debt base. You know, it's a different story, different day, but they're, they're trying to put us all in this box to meet their criteria. And that's what you got to do too. Like we, I can't take a C person because he said one thing right and expect, oh gosh, he can, he can, he can fix roofs really well though. He's got 40 years of experience. But he's got 40 years of doing it the wrong way maybe. Yeah. Or bad habits. And a meth habit. <laughs> he's got no teeth. That's a bad sign. I'm not trying to be negative there, but taking a C, just let them go to the C company, man. If you got C credit, they're going to let me bounce and I'll have to go find a bookie. That's fine. I'll find a bookie. Yeah. I'll keep digging. Of course you won't hurt me. I'm going to win either way. I'm persistent. I'm just going to keep digging. That's right. There's so much. I mean, you're, 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 you're guys you're talking to, Jim, they just don't know, man. There's so much flipping money in the world. There's, it's endless. They'll just print more of it. They don't, they just, now they just digitize it. Wait to, yep. wait to 2030, see what happens. There won't be any more money. It won't be, it's going to be fake. And they're all, I mean, the control situation will be out of control. I mean, people, I mean, it's just, don't get me started on that. That's a whole different topic. We can do that next time. Yeah. That's right. We'll have a special topic yeah, about that. Yeah, yeah. That's why it's so important to have a franchise now. Yeah, man. You got to earn that. You got to earn that you stuff. Earn you got, it has to be attracted to you. Like you can't go out and find money and beat on it. If you do that to a woman, they'd arrest you, you know, for stalking or whatever, or rape. Money has to be attracted to you. So it's, it does start with Jim, what you're doing, which obviously it's a great service, providing marketing help and direction to roofers who, who just don't know what they're doing. Yeah. So as you ask these questions, you're obviously trying to peel back the onion of our success and the company's interview success. Yeah. And when it comes down to it, it all comes down to procedure systems and persistence. Like you, they have to have a why that pulls them through those tough times. And 
You're going to get no's. Like, and I'm a salesperson and you're going to get no's. I, give me some more of them. If it takes a hundred no's to get one yes, that's my formula. I don't mm -hmm. care. What, uh, it's a thousand no's. Great. I, then it's a yes. But we're, I just got to figure the formula. That's the it. Persistence. It, yep. And it, and it becomes a formula, but it doesn't become a formula until after you've done it enough times to recognize the pattern in the formula, mm -hmm. right? Then, the, the conversion rate. It's the rinse and repeat model. So now, yeah. now you have something that you can fix. And the biggest thing is people try to change too many things or they keep doing the same thing, expecting a different outcome, which we all know the definition of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sandy, I it think. Is, it is, so it sounds but, crazy. But you gotta change yourself first. So right now, the biggest advice I can give your viewers, Jim, is your biggest problem we had in our, in our Tuesday hustle this morning is the guy. I got some guys who are you no, know, they're three, four million dollar producers in the group, and I, well, Joe, I mean, guy's a multi million dollar producer, but he had he's had a few bad months, and he he admitted like, dude, what 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 was the turn for him? It's like I got out of my own way, which really means to get down the weeds. He he had to get back, he, instead of being a salesperson, he had to be a sold person. Mm -hmm. You gotta get sold on why you're going to market, why you're going to use Jim as your coach in marketing. You gotta get sold on, on if you want to join a, a franchise system. You gotta get sold on why you're gonna push through resistance with Paul and Mary at the table to make sure your kids are fed. Like your why has to be big, your persistence has to be strong, or else that's when you get pushed around. Mm -hmm. you, you, you keep repeating, well, I did this once. I, I ran a one legged appointment once and it worked. It worked. I did it once. Yeah, yeah but you did it 90 times and then it failed the other 90 times. If it takes two decision makers, get them all there. Yeah. Anyway, that's, that's neither here nor there, but that's all part of systems and procedures. Yeah. For sure. Yes. And, and it, it, so having the systems, executing on the systems. Um, so for these, you know, for, for the viewers that, you know, have that, you know, uh, I get, uh, well, let's get back to some of the systems that you guys do. So you have your marketing system, you're, 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 you're focused on brand recognition, top of mind. That, that's kind of, and, and in that top of mind, you become the, the number one or number two company in that area. That, yeah. That's the goal. And, and, it, and it's, a, it's not a, a short term, uh, it's not a short term plan, I'm assuming. It's a long term no. plan. No, it's a um, it's it's a long term deal, and then you you also have to pepper in all the other stuff, the calls to action, the yes. uh, digital stuff. Uh, you know, you you've got to be the best at all of it, and you know that's what we we feel like we've become. Yeah, for far. sure. And so we we you know you got you have you have to be you have to be the best in in, in 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 every turn. And and then to to Kevin's point too, you have to you have to really believe that you're the best. Right. You have to oh, know that that the work that you're performing is 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 top notch. And and I think that leads to a, another point of uh, that, that can kind of lead us into sales systems a little bit is where people struggle with with what what their worth is at that sales at the closing table. Right. Mm -hmm. are, are you competing against the chuck in a truck that's just willing to take, you know, to make nothing? Or are you trying to compete with that guy? Or are you building yourself a brand that people will pay more for? Of course you can. Can I, can I, can I hit on that, Jim? Please. Let me take a hit on that deal real quick. Let me swing at that. Here's, I got my friend Ben Day. He's with a bank here locally, a regional bank, Jim. Ben, I'm sorry, that's Jim. I got Jim here, I got Ben back here. All right, you know how to speak. You just say, yeah, yeah, regional, yeah, cool. So a fairly big bank and Ben's not in competition with other banks, all right? He's, he's not competing. So this, this is the biggest problem that most owners like us challenge, struggle with and or salespeople. They struggle with, they believe they're in competition, as you said it, Jim, with Chuck in the truck or Fred, uh, you know, this freaky roofer or <laughs> Sam the shabby <laughs> shingler, whatever you want to call the guy, it doesn't matter. That guy will always exist, and that's just the way it is. Yeah, that's right. The real competition, I believe personally, is in the mind of the buyer. So our competition, our, our battlefield, is inside their head. Mm -hmm. And it, my only real competition, the, com the competitors there is me and them. Yeah, and it's in the mind of you too. I've got to win that battle first. So there's people who they employ and talk to, companies you work with, Jim, have salespeople. That's the biggest problem. Dude, you don't want any salespeople. Like get, if you got, if you're calling yourself, I don't want, I want some sold people. My people are sold. I, I call them sold. You're sold. I got some sold. I got a sold person here. I got a sold person there. They've got to be sold out because price, you got to get this. 
price is a myth. Like that's like number 12 on the list of concern for buyers. They don't, they want problems solved. And when value exceeds price, what do people do, Jim? Buy. They buy things. It has to exceed it. If it doesn't exceed it, no one's buying. Yep. I don't care what the cost is. I will buy that thing if it solves my problem. And I perceive the value you're sharing with me. If I can't present the value, solve a problem for you, at whatever price is, I'm not going to buy it. If you got me a price I'm happy with, and the value ex exceeds the ask, and you're showing me a way to, you can fund it for me, Mm -hmm. And I can pay for it as I use it. Dude, I'm in. Sign me the hell up. Why are you taking so long to wrap this deal up? How come this isn't sold yet? I'm buying. I, you're sold. I'm sold. We're all sold. I don't want to be sell, sold to. I just want to be sold. Because if I'm walking trying to sell you, I'm a salesperson. I'm, a, I'm walking. I'm a sold person. And you're going to buy from me today. I, I get that permission from them when I walk in the house. Mm -hmm. Here's what I'm doing today. Here's why I'm going to do it. Here's how I'm going to do it. And here's why you're going to buy from me. My job is to do that. Would you stop somebody from, would, would you appreciate someone stopping you from doing your job? Well, of course not. Would you work with me then to do my job? Well, yeah. Would you help me throughout the process? Of course I would. If at any point in time throughout the day, I'm not helping you solve your problems, would you let me know that way I can better serve you? Well, of course. Thank you for the opportunity to serve you. Thank you for you helping me. I look forward to being a roofer for you for a long, whatever, as long as possible. Whatever script you want to write, but I'm getting buy-in from the get-go because I'm sold. And I'm doing, a, my job is, a, this is my job. I'm not here to give you a flipping estimate. You got guys walking in thinking they're going to drop estimates. That's not my job. If, they're, if they see themselves that way, guess what they will do? They will do that thing. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that's what happens. He's got almost gonna get. I got four estimates to run today. I want to run four estimates. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's a he's, a, he's a, 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 a a commodity. He's voluntarily commoditized himself. He's turned himself into cornmeal. Like, hey, I'm I'm cornmeal, and so if the, as the price goes up and down depending on market conditions, I'm going to go up and down with it. Yeah. Like, so if Chuck's seven dollars a square, yeah. I better be six fifty a square. Yeah. So I do. Okay. Great. Yeah. There's and and the the the, the trick is that there is no commodities market of roofing. The, the, you're not listening to the radio and then today the mid market you know Update. numbers or uh, you know we got we got we got the uh, asphalt shingles asphalt trading shingles at trading at two twenty five a square oh, and, and okay. rib panel exposed fasteners going at <laughs> three twenty a square. Yeah, like, I don't, like no, no homeowner has any clue what roofing costs, what what anything should cost, what anything can cost. They don't care. They don't. They don't. And they care. don't care. They, and they don't care. No one cares. What price can is. you solve my problem? Like, what does an Apple? What does an iPhone cost? Like a thousand dollars, two thousand dollars? Who knows? Who cares? And who cares? They don't even ask when they go to the store. All they say is, "Who cares? I want it. I have to have it." Okay. Here you go. Great. Do you take this credit card? Yes, yes I do. Yes, Perfect. I do. By the way, how much was that? So I could tell my wife. Don't care. When, no she, when, she, looks at the, when she looks at the bank account. No, like, ben, ca thinks, ben thinks that people care. Yeah, about he thinks price. people care. Yeah, yeah. They don't care. Nobody cares. No one cares. Because, hey, listen, if I tell you this, this, this thing's a thousand bucks, where'd that price come from? Yeah, I made it up. <laughs> I made it up. Yeah. If I can tell you it's 2,000, it's the same thing. It's it costs the same, the same amount of money to make. Where'd that price come from? See, the, pro up. the problem is these guys that you're working with, Jim, they're, they're letting, they're letting Zacumate, the insurance companies, and other roofers run their companies for them. Yeah. It's suicidal. It's embarrassing. They, they have no clue what, the, what their worth is. You said it. They have no clue what they're worth. That's why I know my value is X, and I'm bringing it to you. If you don't buy from me, I'm doing you a disservice if I let you go to chuck in the truck. Yeah. And I won't allow that happen today, so sign here. They'll walk, they'll walk past a home. They'll walk into a home that has a $60,000 Dodge Ram <laughs> and walk past a television that probably costs 2000 yeah. bucks. while the person I know is on their, on their phone house. that costs $2,000, yeah. and they're afraid to tell them it's a $12,000 roof or $15,000 roof. <laughs> It's it's just it's idiotic. It is it's it's totally asinine. So yes, to to wrap up that yeah. sales system. Sorry yes. about that. Yes, oh, we have a sales system and it's really good. And uh, we call it the prevent a no sales system because that's all you want to do in a sales process. It, prevent yeah. no's. And so uh, it's really good. And uh, if it's if, pans pans for pans sure. for sure. Prevent a no sales system. The pans. And uh, we.
train on it relentlessly and there's an entire uh, module in Honest Abe University where it's an entire acted out 101, uh, 202. Yep, there's 101, 202 all the way up to 404. 404. So 101, 102, 103, 201, 202, 203. We did, I try to keep it university like, obviously. And uh, all the way up to 404, I think, which is like kind of mastering uh, the, yeah. the clothes. You're at my level now. Yeah. 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 You're teaching that class. But it's uh, the, anyway, it's so the, the, yes, it, it, the, the, the so, sales system. So you have to have the system again, kind of what, we're, what we've kind of been going over. You have to have the system. So you have your sale, sales system, the preventer no sales system. And then you practice your sales system over and over and over again. You're fully sold on the outcome of what happens when you mm -hmm. execute your sales system in the right way. And then you execute. Yes. Every Thank time. And, and, and if you... If you continue this process over and over again, that's how you get to 10 million, 40 million, uh, yeah, a billion, the, the big numbers B. Yeah, the numbers right? don't matter, Jim. Yeah, it's, it's, it doesn't. it's endlessly it's, scalable. You get, to, yeah, you get to what you want your business to become. Yeah, my, I tell you, my biggest problem in life is always setting my goals too low. Like yeah. we go to the bank and we ask, let's say you want to get a loan to grow your scale of business and you can only bring in so much revenue a year, whatever it is. And me, I've always funded my stuff through my, through my clients, but through other operations we operate, I'm always looking for cheaper money or to, to fuel money in our businesses in any business is rocket fuel. You yep. got to propel the ship, man. Got to get to the moon. It took a lot of fuel to bust through the atmosphere. And that thing moves real slow when it gets going until it gets going the critical mass. Anyway, with that being said, Back to what we're saying about sales real quick. A lot of, lot of my, and I, I'm okay to admit this, a lot of my guys know what to say. They're not saying what they know. Yeah. Like, I bet, I know you got owners and listeners and fans tuning in who know what to do, what to say. They just don't do it. And I don't know yeah. why that is. And that's because their sales minded are estimated minded. And they're not sold on doing it. For some yeah. reason, there's a glitch in the matrix, and they don't, they're not bought in, yeah. and they don't believe. And I, I, I always think everything comes back to their why. Like, why would I put myself in a position to be here today? Like, either they don't believe in the value they bring to the consumer, they don't believe in the purpose to take care of the family. I mean, it's, they, they're, they're probably carrying with them an exit strategy. Well, I could go back and work at, you know, Kroger's yeah. again or whatever. And they, they believe that they are the same as – that's whatever yeah i don't even understand See, I, you, like, you talk to us we don't get that they believe they're the same and like, that's the that's the what? biggest problem like what's that even mean like yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, you're 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 more expensive than chucking a truck okay. uh, yeah, I, yeah, i'd hope so well I i'd be shocked if you were the same that's that's but but it, it, their mind they should be like you're more expensive than apple iphone well yeah we're not we're different things man me and chuck and a truck are different things that's, right. that's you know, that's like saying I'm more expensive than a newspaper. Like, uh, yeah, I get it. We're just different things. You're comparing apples to oranges to yeah. whatever. Things that are different aren't the same. Yeah. So like, people got to get that. Yeah. It's like, it's different, the different versions of the Bible it has the same content, but it's written differently. And some of the verses are, are omitted. Yeah. A Dodge Ram's more expensive than a bicycle. Well, they both do the same yeah. thing. They both have tires. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I mean, I guess kind of sure. But and, that, and that's the problem with that. Just like to your point, Jim, they're, they're not. They're, there's perhaps not a system or a process they're following and they're not sold out to it. And they, they have, they bought in to believing they're a commodity. Yeah. They believe yeah. they're a bicycle and they're competing against other roofers. I don't compete against other roofing companies. Uh -huh. I get it. There's other roofers in the industry in my area. I understand it. Yeah. I get it. I, I thank you for reminding me my goal daily, by the way, no one likes to hear this. I'm trying to put them all out of business. I've succeeded multiple times. Coming after you. Yeah, who, who is this? <laughs> I'm coming to your marketplace. I'll be in your market soon if you're. Very soon. I mean, I'm either you're gonna you're gonna get on board, or I'm gonna put you out of business. And that's not. You'll get some hate in your comments. I'm sure. I don't really care. But they should also have the same. Same mindset. Yeah, because I, I, I'm yeah. not here to compete. I'm here to flip and dominate, man. That's right. I want to suck all the oxygen out of the room for everybody else dies. I'm the only guy breathing on the oxygen. <laughs> I'm sucking that up. <laughs> you are going to choke out, man. 
That's they're going to have to break up the Honest Abe roofing monopoly. Is that what you're yeah. going to? Is that what you said? Your your goal is to testify in front of Congress to break up your your roofing monopoly. I hope so. yeah, that's that's, right. that's the goal, that would man. be cool, man. You got to have something you can. You got what drives you through the pain every day? Yeah, no, right. no, no. You can't. We're going to help you. No, hell no. No, we're we're building. We're trying to build out a, a something that's so huge. Yeah. And will it ever happen? Whatever. Yeah, maybe not. But at least I'm trying. What are you that's doing right. today? Because there, to, there is pain lose. every day. There is pain every day, right? Oh, I, it's I like say that I still be in pain because my ass wasn't working. Yeah, it's gonna be a struggle. <laughs> Poop my pants. Poop your pants. Bed sores. Yeah, awesome. Bad. No. Well, so so now uh, the only thing that we haven't really kind of covered is is okay. So now we're. I, I know that you guys have positioned yourself or not and and think of yourself as a as a sales and marketing organization first right um, Mark, no marketing and sales marketing and sales marketing yes. and sales yeah marketing you can't and sell sales until someone knows you and so so then once you once you get into these markets and start dominating with your marketing and sales systems you got to put roofs on right so mm -hmm. maybe speak a little bit to some of the per, you know kind of processes and and uh, how you effectively and efficiently run, you know, r run your crews maybe and, 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 and get your, uh, you know, run your production crews and things like that. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't know anything about that. <laughs> yeah. No. We're, so, we're a roofing company too. Yeah. Obviously that that's, that's the part that we all, you know, Shoot. That, that we all want to avoid. Right. Well, we got to do work. <laughs> you, you, you gotta, you gotta make it happen. So the, it all, it all comes from you, what, what you believe is your is is the value proposition for the homeowners right everything 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 comes from that direction to us when you're making decisions so if if, a, if it's something that's going to be a value to the homeowner you need to have that as your as your compass and so that's why we that's how we created the executive installation process which is our uh methodology of installation okay we have this we we install the shield of protection around the homes uh, every and every time every too much oh, sorry yes yes i don't want to give too much so every but everything goes uh everything goes exactly the same okay you want it, you not only are you going to systematize your your sales process but you want to systematize the installation process yeah uh i can give you i can give you way too much i'm sure but suffice it to say you know it all start it don't all starts you don't you don't compete with other roofers that's, that's, well, that's true. <laughs> true it's true but and the, you, you know you could you, uh, we could give you a, a Lamborghini if you don't know how to drive stick. It's not going to go anywhere. So that's right. It doesn't really matter. But the uh, the the whole point of having the uh, executive installation process the way that it's done is well, to benefit the homeowner. Well, I'll just say this to, for Jim to make it easy. I think he's looking for you're looking for bullet points probably. Of course. For, so instead of giving all the details, the the big the biggest thing is your your listeners have to understand that the company they're not just they're not a roofing company. There, there's basically three parts to a, any successful company, especially in our industry. First and foremost, we, you said it, it's what your core competency is, Jim, which is marketing. Mm -hmm. So attention first. Attention always comes before anything else. Okay, yep. egg, the, sorry, the, the chicken came first. Okay, then get laid eggs. God said there's chicken. Yeah. Adam, Adam named it. You're a chicken. You yeah. laid eggs, okay? And then gave birth more chickens. Anyway, so, uh, so that's just true. It's how, it's how it went, Ben. I, I read, I read, I read the Bible. Though. <laughs> anyway, the, 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 uh, so marketing first, then I have to convert. So I'm a marketing company first and foremost. I'm not a roofing company. So day one marketing day two or the second after that, I have to be, I have to have a sales company mindset. I've had a sales company going inside yeah. my operation. Cause it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how good you are at installing. Nope. If you can't convince people of that, and this, it doesn't matter. You're never going to get to practice. So the, the the other part of the company, Jim, obviously we are in the construction industry. We are now a construction management company. That's that's the back end of the first two quadrants, or not quadrants, or the first two thirds of that operation. Yeah. You can break, obviously each segment breaks off into its little if you have or a flow chart or org chart of each three core groups there: marketing, sales, construction management. Inside the construction management, they're following the same procedures and processes in every other system, um, sector of the company. There's processes for installation. There's obviously has to be processes for, for communication between yourself and your clients. Mm -hmm. and, and after you're done with the construction management part of the company, that has to go back to the marketing de department. The, there's basically seven tiers to our sales system. First and foremost, you got to get attention, right? 
you got to acquire a, a prospect. So prospect number one. Mm -hmm. Number two is initial contact. You got to talk. You got to know how to introduce and get in, get inside in front of somebody. Number three, you got to be able to present, man. Presenting's up next. Right. Actually, no, I qualify. I, I qualify. I'm sorry. I got I got excited. I, I'm so happy about so excited about yeah, presenting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lost my lost my. That's not right. So prospecting number one. Number two. Initial contact. So we're still we're inside the marketing and sales part of the company still. Now initial contact. I'm in sales. Actually, I'm still in a marketing format somewhat, even though I'm in front of a client. Number three. Now I can qualify who has been qualified to buy from me, and his wife. Hopefully, she's present or vice versa. Mm -hmm. Are they qualified? I'm qualifying them, and that way I can put together that battle plan throughout my sales process on how to serve them the best way. That way I can convert them to a client. Number four. I'm going to present. Five, I'm negotiating. Six, I'm closing. Seven, it's everybody misses. Mm -hmm. Seven, you gotta get referrals, you gotta, man. Gotta lay the Jim, egg. Jim, Jim got you a con, got you a lead. What in the hell are you doing with it after you close it? Get some more. Turn that. Make, make that chicken lay some damn eggs. Yeah, get the eggs. Get some referrals. And then go go to work on them. Any good soul person would bring leads back to the owner of the business. You're let, you're all bitching about your leads suck. You suck. The leads don't <laughs> suck. You suck. Yeah. Marketing sucks. No, you, you suck. suck. Sorry about my strong language, Jim. Hopefully, your, your, your listeners are it's tough. Yeah. But yeah so Roofing to, contractors are tough. Yeah, man. To, I know. To wrap that up, you know, so we, we know that you, you've got to be able to, in order to have a systemized business, you've, you've got to be able to keep things relatively well organized, right? Yeah. So that's why we did create, we created Abe Connect as a way yeah. to kind of manage the flow of not only, not only customer information, inbound information from potential customers and manage the sales process throughout and follow up process, everything with that, but also as a way to manage the, the construction management part of things and yeah, to yeah. control, control the construction management part yeah. of things. Abe Connect does all that. For it does. It does all of that. And so you, you know, it'll, it'll, it, it's navigating. a communication piece to, between you and your, your uh, partner crews. Uh, communication piece between you and the homeowner, scheduling software. It, did, it does everything that you needed to do. And so that was another, that, that's another thing, you know, when we, when you launch a, a franchise system, you need to have some things that are technologically in place to make it easy to do. Yeah. You know, and there's, there's a million other, you know, companies out there that have uh, CRMs, you know, Salesforce, you know, million others, AccuLinks. Yeah. You know, they don't have AccuLinks. I mean, that's 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 a decent system. I'm sure some of you guys are using it. Yeah, but it, oh, yeah. it's insurance. Job Nimbus, AccuLinks, all these, yeah. Yeah, yeah uh, uh, what's, uh, uh, several. But they're all a lot of them. Those are really insurance based. Mm -hmm. Especially yeah, any any of the ones that are roofing specific or or home services or, specific. Or they're they're two stop based. I'm not doing a deal in two stops. No. I go out, I get the con information, I do the meet, I do the warm up, I get information, I come back, I put the crap into the picture of the satellite garbage into the thing, it pushes, poops out numbers out, exactly, you made. I come back, I present, dude, that's stupid. Yeah, Why are you slowing down the process? Shut them down day one. Yes. Walk in, it's done. Like, here you go. And the homeowner doesn't like that process. That's idiotic. Wanna, nobody, that's right. it, it was on, ship it to me. Yeah, people want to buy now. They want to buy it now. So that, that's what, that's what Abe Connect helps you do, uh, you know, Anybody out there watching this that just stumbles upon it because they saw two good-looking fellas and a, and a third good-looking fella in the uh, behind with red behind them, and they just wanted to watch this, and then they're thinking, "Hey, I'm not a roofer. How how would I even run this this company?" That's uh, truth. Truth be told, you know, uh, I don't think none of ours are roofers. None of our franchisees are roofers. No, that's no we don't. I don't mean the conversions are whatever, but uh, if we, we I think Jim, you probably seen yourself getting a. a, a, a a good roofer who's good at being a tactician, uh, being somebody who can run, do roofing work, struggles and all the other things. And because the roofing part really isn't the business. I'm sorry to say it. Roofers who are listening, I don't care if you're the best roofer. Congratulations. I'll send you a trophy. Get, send me your address or your phone number and I'll, I'll send you a trophy and your email address and anything else you can give me to help mm -hmm. communicate with you. Anyway, the, send me your information and I'll send you a trophy for being the best roofer, but no one knows, no one cares. You need to be the best business and getting attention, getting sales, and having to be able to forecast your future profits, being able to execute that and repeat it, re rinse and repeat every and the, day. And the funny thing is that that makes you the best roofer by virtue of you're, the, you're able to actually service people after the sale. Unless every roofer out there that's on the, on the call bats a thousand, 
you've never had a mistake. You've never had a callback. You've never had any sort of leak happen after the fact. You've never had a bad day. Then keep, keep rolling with it. But if you want to, if, if you, ha if you're going to scale your business out, you're going to have times where maybe you, 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 you know, have to go back to a home once, twice, whatever to, to alleviate the problems. The only way you can do that is if you're fiscally solvent. Okay. And you're, you're, you get that, you get that phone call from a, from a homeowner that you screwed up something with. What are you going to do when you get that call? Is character going to push you to go out and take care of it? Your character may wane if you don't have the funds necessary to do that. And you're not going to have the funds necessary to do that if you're working for insurance proceeds. I'm sorry, you just won't. And so you want to have, you want to have a, a solid business. And as, as a roofer, I'm not knocking any roofers being conversion uh, into our system uh, per se as a, as a, you know, in stone uh, well, rule Jim, of ours, but we Jim, Jim knows how hard it is. We've never seen, we I've, I've not met one yet that is past the fat, the franchise approval team. Uh, so if you, if you guys are out there and you're watching and you, you feel like you are uh, a, an excellent operator, have the potential to be an excellent operator. You're just missing maybe some of the tools necessary to do it. We, we'd be happy to, we'd be happy to meet with you and uh, discuss that. Uh, and how do, uh, how do they, how would they get a hold of you? That is a wonderful question. So to get a hold of us, we have uh, there's a couple couple different ways. You can visit our website, roofingfranchise.com. Uh, that'll take you there. Honestabroofingfranchise.com will also get you there, but some people don't like to type, so we shortened it to roofingfranchise.com. Uh, that'll take you right there. You can shoot us an email uh, at info at honestabroofingfranchise.com. Sorry, you're going to type that all out. Uh, or you can call us, 866 Five eight seven five one seven one, and uh, ask for a franchise advisor. We'd be happy to take care of you, and uh, see if this uh, would be right for you, and if you would be right for us. Well, great. That, I appreciate you guys' time today. I know that that you're very busy in in you know setting up all your new franchisees and 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 running your you know running your business, but I I definitely appreciate you coming on and sharing your insights and wisdoms in in how you've become a, such a successful roofing company. And this has been another episode of the Roofing Success Podcast. Thanks, Jim. If you would like to generate more sales through your digital marketing efforts, please visit roofermarketers.com and get a copy of the book, Internet Marketing for Roofing Contractors, How to Triple Your Sales and Turn Your Roofing Website into an Online Lead Generation Machine. Also, check the training section of the website for guides on everything from running effective pay-per-click ads to how to properly set up your Google My Business listing. This has been another episode of the Roofing Success Podcast. Thanks for listening.